Okay, we're going to make a spiral sliced ham in our rival roaster oven. We did our turkey last Thanksgiving for that, and we're going to do another turkey this Thanksgiving that way. But this time we're going to try our spiral sliced ham in here. And I'm going to do it just like I do in my oven because this right here saves a lot of room in your oven. So, um, in your big oven. So, you, you can save up your big oven for for desserts and everything else. So let's go ahead and get this started. So when you get a Smithville ham, it comes in this nice packaging with some netting over it. And this is the Smithville spirals. Now because this is already a pre-cooked ham, it's already done, the, one of the things you have to watch for with a spiral sliced ham is getting it too done and getting it hard. You don't want that. So I'm going to follow these directions exactly and see if this works. This is just kind of a test. So we're going to heat our oven to 275. I've got it heating to 275. And I'm going to remove all these packaging materials. And I'm going to place the ham um, in here. We're going to wrap it up. So let me just show you how I'm going to do it. Just like... I would do it if I were going to put it in my big oven. The only difference that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water. I want to see what this water, just make sure it kind of steams it a little. Just because this is a um, different oven, different oven type, I, I added just a little bit of water in there. So let's open this up. I've washed my hands. I'm all about food safety. Open this baby up. These are always beautiful hams. And I'm going to try and reserve the juices that are in here. You can see it has a bone right here. But this is a fully cooked ham already. And again, what I said was you've got to be careful with these to not dry them out. And my made that mistake. My first one I ever cooked, I didn't wrap it. And I'm going to show you what you do. So let's get this open. They're always a little tricky to open, but I try and save that juice that's inside the bag. So I just open it just enough. And I've got my meat thermometer. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I've got it here. You can see my meat thermometer. We're going to cook this to about 140 degrees. I don't know if I'm... You know what? Yeah, I can just leave it on here on the pan. I think that'll be okay. There's usually not a whole lot of juice in here. But I like to save what is in here. I'll leave it on this pan and pour it in there with it. So here's our ham mm -hmm, right there. Good. See, that's a beautiful ham. And see, spiral slice is already sliced for you. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful? And what happens is if you don't cover this up, this whole portion here, it'll usually, from right here back, will burn and become very hard. And it's just not, that's not what I like. I like mine to stay all nice and um, juicy and tender. Also with the Smithfield hams, they come with a signature ham glaze. You can use this glaze and we're gonna use it later about 30 minutes before we're done. And also a brown sugar. I'm gonna do mine with brown sugar and pineapple juice as well. And I'll show you how to do that later. And this particular ham, just so you can see, was um, is 11.65 pounds. Now, if this ham were not already fully cooked, I would cook this for about three hours. Um, we're going to try about an hour, maybe two. I'll let you know what we come up with. So, let's wrap it up. And the reason I'm doing this is this is part of the instructions. On the original instructions for a, a regular oven. This is one of the best hams that you can buy and eat. So now I've got that good like that. Let's put another side on this back part. This is heavy duty. That's some heavy duty Reynolds mm -hmm. wrap there. And notice how I'm just kind of layering it a little. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead. Let's put our rack in and our oven. We go. There's the water in there, and I'll probably add a little bit more water. It's already pretty hot. It's yeah. already hot. Yeah. Oops. So it's on. Again, it's on 275. Got my hand there. The reason I let that open for a moment is I'm going to pour. 
trying to get these in here without making a mess here. This back in there. Pour the juices back in. See that? I'm going to close it up. So we're going to close up the hand. So I'm going to cover that up. And see, you've got this awesome roaster that's going to cook this ham for me. So there it is, and I'm putting the top on. There we go. Nice, tight, stewing in its own juices. Got a little bit of water below it. It's sitting up off. There we go. And I'm going to close that up. And I'm going to cook that for about an hour, maybe 40 minutes, maybe two hours. We'll see. So we'll get back with you. Okay, it has been an hour and 40 minutes, even though Smith's Phil says to cook it for about, uh, let's see, an hour. Um, we're going to take this out and see, or open this up and see what it, um, lots of good, nice steam. You can see some more juices that have accumulated in the bottom. I only put about a cup, maybe two cups of water in there. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to watch out for the steam here. So I'm going to open that oh, real carefully. You see it just still looks, oh, wow. it doesn't have that crusty look no, in there. Nothing crusty There's at all, steam man. coming out. I'd like it to be a little bit warmer and it's still looking good. It's not crusting or anything or burning. So I'm going to cover it back up. I'm going to turn this here to three. I'm going to turn this to 350 and I'm going to keep, make sure that everything is still tight and compact. I'm going to close it back up and cook it for about another hour at that higher temp and then we'll put our glaze on. Okay, so we've been cooking our ham. We cooked it at 275 for about an hour and 40 minutes and I've turned it now to 350 and it's, it's been cooking for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead. So now we're going to add um, this is the Smithfield Signature Ham Glaze that you can add to it. But I also do my own. I use the Dole um, pineapple slices. Pour out the juice. This is just some regular brown sugar. My favorite usually is the Domino brand. And I like getting the light brown sugar. And I don't measure a whole lot. And this is only if you want your ham to have a sweet taste. If you don't want your ham to have a sweet taste, don't do this. So this is two cans of juice of the pineapple juice mixed in here with some brown sugar. And that's just me. Looks like it needs a little bit more. We're going to pour this over this and to let the ham cook another um, 30 to 40 minutes. Because this ham's already done. All we're doing is just heating it up and saving our oven um, usage. So here's the, just a glaze that you can put on top. You can heat this on top of your stove if you like. Okay, let's, let's taste Smithfields and see how it is. I just know I like mine. I like my brown sugar and pineapple. It's kind of old school. Everybody has their own little glaze they use. And this one, it's all right. That's a pretty good um, ham glaze. So I'm just gonna mix kind of the both of them together. So let's put a little bit of that one in. Actually, let's just put all of it. So I added a little bit more brown sugar, pineapple to theirs. And look how that's, that's so nice. Nice thick juice there. Okay. So again, ham, 275 at about an hour and 40 minutes. And of course, this all depends on the size of your ham. This is all going to be trial and error for you too. Then we turned it up to 350 for the last hour. Look at all that steam coming out of there. It's making its own water. Open it up here. I'm gonna keep that inside. I'm gonna pour. It smells great. And it smells delicious. I wish you had smell of vision. Mm, man. And we're gonna pour on, not all of this, just about half over that ham and let it cook the next 40 minutes with these juices seeping in and I'm not going to break any of those little slices in there. So you see I'm just pouring that on there. And most of it's staying in because I did have the, you know what, let's just go ahead and put most of that in there. Alright. 
Let's go ahead and just put it all. So you can see, it's kind of got a pocket of juice in there now. It's gonna cook in that for a little bit. So I'm gonna shut it back up. And let it cook for the next 40 minutes or so with that juice in there. Now what I've got cooking on the side is if this were that if this were Christmas I would have mashed potatoes but for today I'm just doing some root vegetables and so this is parsnip some sweet potatoes mm -hmm. and some squash and some onion and then I've got some sweet peas now I'm using the fire roasted by green giant root vegetables with red onions and all you do is saute them which I've already done they come with the grill marks on them and this is just a quick little side dish for me and Tony we just wanted to try a ham out for you. That's probably a parsnip there. That was good. So wow. mm. we're going to let these wow. steam and just cook a little bit. And I love, we'll do some more videos on this Oster um, cooker. I hardly turn my oven on anymore. My oven top, I almost cook everything in this little thing. I do fajitas and everything in this. And you can also remove this. I don't get too hot. You can take this off and put it in the oven. It's pretty awesome. We'll do some videos on this um, this little um, grill later. Okay, and this should be our last little open up. We cooked it another about 40 minutes to an hour on 350. And nice steam coming out of there. Let's take a look. And of course, this is the part where we've already put the glaze on. There's a glaze inside there. So it's got a sweet glaze. And there's our ham. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. Wow. And if you're having a big buffet type dinner with folks over, you could leave that in there. And I would leave it in this paper. But if you don't want it real fancy or anything. But I don't, I'm not real big into fancy. And look how it's already done. I usually cut somewhere near um, the bone when I have a spiral slice to get those first few pieces off. And I just... Um, there are instructions. Let me show you that so you'll see. Um, whole ham carving instructions and half ham carving instructions cut around the center bone with a knife to free as many slices from the bone as desired. And you want them to fall down like that if you're looking for presentation. And what they mean is, is just see that it's yeah, already, wow. um, it's got nice slices to it. But for, just for me and Tony, um, I'm just going to get a slice off. We did this video just for you guys, just to see how this ham would do. Well, let's just get a couple of pieces off, and we'll let Tony try it since he's not been on the video today at all. I look kind of gnarly, folks. Yeah, oops, 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 kind oops. Of one of those so, days where I'm just kind of not so, shaved or anything. Yeah. but uh. <laughs> He's been under the weather the past several days. Yeah, been so, a sick. Anyway. So let's pull that out of there. I'll eventually, ta I'll take this out, right. but there's some nice slices of ham there. If you want to try this, Tony. Oh, I'm going to, yeah. Oh, sweet. Yes. And there's his root vegetables and his um, sweet peas. So we're going to let him try that out for us. Oh, man. That's it's superb. All right. So, so that's how you... So juicy. That's yeah. good. So there's, there's a good... Um, Christmas ham and um, Merry Christmas to all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, folks.